Hello, welcome. My name is Tina. This is Simply In Stitches. I've not been around for a long time and recently I've had a few messages asking if I'm okay and what I'm up to. So as I'm off work at the moment, I had my cataract done and so my wings have been clipped. I've got to, can't do certain things. So I thought, why not take the opportunity, say hello, have a little catch up, tell you what I'm up to and yeah just touch base with you after such a long time so i'm going to go straight into what i'm enjoying knitting at the moment so in my sheepy bag <laughs> this is from etsy it was a gift but that is the name if you're interested it's just a really nice size bag for a large project i have got a flax light in this by tin can knits so I've not got very far on it yet. So I'm sure you're aware of the flax. I've done a video tutorial years ago for the flax, which is an Aran weight sweater. But this is for the four ply fingering weight. So it's just a basic raglan with its top down. You've got those garters down the sleeves there. And yeah, just a nice, simple sweater. And so I had some of this yarn. And this is a Hobbycraft yarn that I picked up when I was in there one day with a friend and I just loved these colours. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I love those colours. So I just brought two balls of it. And it's the Women's Institute Soft and Silky. And it is very soft and silky. And it's just a 100% microfiber acrylic. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought perhaps I'd make some like a shawl or something, a big shawl to 100 grams. But then in April for my birthday, if you are signed up to Hobbycraft, they send you five pounds voucher. So I thought, oh, actually, if I went and got a few more balls, then I could make a sweater out of that, like a summer sweater because of those colours. So I went and got, the, it was on three for two. So yeah, I didn't spend much at all because the original two balls were on offer at the same time. So um, I'm getting in the tangle already. So yes, this. This whole sweater is costing me next to nothing really because it was three for two for the balls. And I think they are only, they were two pounds each, I think, because I got three for six pounds. And no, take away from that because it was six pounds after three for two. I'm not going to do the maths. I've got a poorly eye. <laughs> Anyway, I got three for two, cost six pounds, it's like five pounds for the voucher, and so it only cost me a pound. And then I think I paid two pounds a ball each when they were on special offer before. So it cost me about a fiver for this sweater, put it that way. Should we move on? <laughs> I think we should. So, um, yes. So it's a top down. So I started off at the top and I've done a two by two rib but it's only supposed to be one by one but I don't like it when the necks are too big you can see t-shirt going on everything underneath so I wanted it to be closer fitting there is an option now if you haven't knit one for a while that you can do the short rows to bring it up higher at the neck I didn't bother doing that I just wanted something really simple that I can just relax into so I and I've never had a problem with the flaxes I've knit before I think I've knit three or four flax so I thought I'm just going to go with the pattern because the iron weight one always works out nicely so this is how it's working up so I started at the top did the two by two rib and then you do the increases for the raglan so it's just the normal knit um knit front knit back increases I haven't done the garter on the sleeves because I found well, I felt that there's enough going on with this yarn for different colour changes that I didn't want that texture on there as well. So I'm nearly down to dividing up for the sleeves now. But I'm really liking how it's coming out. And because 
it is a striper yarn but it doesn't stripe completely um, but there's different amount of stitches every row that it is changing all the time it's hard to show next time I'll show it on a hanger because it'll be more organized then once I get past these dividing for the arms but I think it's going to be really nice in the summer because it's going to be nice and light to throw on over a t-shirt with jeans either in the morning or at night or as it's like today drizzly and horrible in June just any time <laughs> and then it's a layering piece so if it does come up nice I just fling it off and you've got your t-shirt underneath and but I thought those colours it's very summery so it's not going to look like I'm wearing a woolly jumper in the summer so yes very pleased with how that's going on so I shall carry on with that so it's just nice mindless knitting just in the round so that's that one that's the one that's going well I'll show you the one that's in the naughty corner but really it's me that should be in the naughty corner because this is an easy pattern a well-loved pattern I totally messed up not looking at instructions anymore I just kept on going let me show you so this is close to you shawl it's free pattern on Ravelry lovely pattern you can see that like lace work there, lots of interest. And it's by Let's Knit, just still, I can't say it, I'm gonna put it there. I'll blame my eyes again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, some Ravelry, but you might find it on the Let's Knit site if you want to do this one. So I'm knitting this one in a cotton yarn for a summer. So this is how, I'm all in a tangle again. So this is the yarn, so it's all different colours. And I was gifted this from my friend Ellen. Hello Ellen, thank you. And I bought her some of this actually last year and because I got her some to make socks and it's a King Cole yarn and it is made up of 55% bamboo, 37% cotton and 8% PBT which makes it okay to make socks. These are the socks I knit last year, well worn socks these. So I would recommend this yarn for socks if you want some summer socks. With my shorty ones I just cast on my 64 stitches immediately just do a few knit rounds and then go into the heel turn that's my preferred so yes if you've got some summer socks then this is good yarn as i say it's mainly bamboo they're lovely and cool and they've worn quite well considering i mean they don't look pristine <laughs> but considering that i wear them just on their own and literally i'll go out in the garden wearing them and all sorts so they've had a good battering and they've held up and i'm wearing them again this year as well so getting back to this ellen gifted me this year i'm going to work around for a coffee and she was knitting the close to you shawl and i said oh that looks really nice how the color changes are coming on that so i thought i'm gonna knit one of those i'm gonna copy my friend and knit one of those so all in a tangle so I thought I was doing really well I've got all this done look at that those color changes thought yes this is looking good then I noticed on the pattern I thought oh her like lace work just seems to be going up straight, not taking over the whole shawl. I thought, why doesn't mine do that? Because my lace work is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> so I thought, what's going on here then? Because I'm sure, because this was very popular, this pattern, I was first aware of it when we went to Fiber East Wool Festival, because a lot of the uh, hand dyed yarns their samples were done in this because I think it just shows off the yarn so nicely 
And so I've liked it since then. And I thought, I'm sure it didn't go like that when I've seen all these demo ones. So when I looked at the pattern, yes, it said that where you do the lace, you should always have the same amount of stitches. And I know exactly what I've done. So for this pattern to have these holes, you do a double yarn over. So you yarn over and then yarn over again. So you've got a loop and then you use it to knit again, which gives you extra. So when I was coming back on the other side, instead of using that as a one stitch, I was using the double and purling into the second double. So then I was making a stitch every time. So obviously I was making all these stitches and creating more stitches. So I have got to pull this all the way back. So when it happened, I know why it happened because so I started this pre cataract procedure and I was getting a bit jittery. So that's why I thought I do something mindless. that's going to be easy. And I obviously just didn't pay attention. My mind was somewhere else. And then I was doing it post procedure. So I carried on. So yes, anxiety knitting that didn't work. <laughs> so now I'll have to pull this back and I'm going to restart it properly by reading instructions because literally if you want to knit this where is it that is the whole instructions for the whole of the shawl it's not a hard pattern <laughs> and that's what I was thinking I was thinking oh this is really good I'm enjoying this because I've memorized it I know what I'm doing no no Tina you hadn't memorized it so yes I'm going to pull that back and do that again and we'll see how we go from there so that's it that's all i've got to share for you at the moment i might do a bit of vlog styling through this week as i say i'm off this week because i have to keep dust free and i'm a bit light sensitive at the moment with that eye and you're not supposed to bend and lift when i first found out that i can't bend and lift and things i thought oh this could be a problem. So the first thing I asked the consultant was, can I knit and cross stitch? Can, is it all right to look down for long periods of time? And she said, oh, yes, yes, that's fine. You just don't lean forward and pick things up. So, Excellent. I can do that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So there's people outside looking at squirrels, I should think, I hope. So I'm getting very... <laughs> self-conscious now so I'm going to say goodbye and I shall see you again very soon I think so take care and I'll see you soon bye for now